In the following video, we're going to practice actually classifying systems equations based off of the different classifications we learned in the previous video. And these classifications are consistent and independent, consistent and dependent, or inconsistent. Now remember, inconsistent means that there is no solution. There is no intersection. Consistent and dependent means there is an intersection. It intersects an infinite amount of time. So this would be referred to as infinite solutions. which means they are the same line. Or we can go back to consistent and independent, which means they do intersect. There is one solution. You know, one intersection. And so when we're classifying our systems, we need to recall these definitions. And in order to determine if there's an intersection, whether there's one infinite or no intersection, what we need to do is we need to graph the equations. So we need to convert these to slope intercept form to graph them. So I have first, let's do 4x plus 3y equals 24. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract my 4x from both sides, which makes it a negative on the right side. So I have 3y equals negative 4x plus 24. And then I'm going to divide every term by 3. And that's going to cancel out the coefficient of 3 here. Remember, when you're doing that, write your slope as a fraction, negative 4 thirds x and 24 divided by 3 is 8. And so we have y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 8. So to graph this system, we're going to go by 2's on our graph on the y-axis. So 2, 4, and I got 6, 8, 10, and 12. Now, we could go by 2s on our x-axis if we want, or we could go by 1s. Uh, to be consistent, I'm going to go by 2s, and that way we can use our slope like normal. All right, so we are going to graph a y-intercept of 8, and we have a slope of negative 4 thirds. Now, I could go down, 8 minus 4 brings me down to 4, and then go to the right 3 and mark a point here. But since I use the same intervals for the x-axis and the y-axis, I can actually use the slope as is based off those intervals. I can go down 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 1, 2, 3. I can go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right 1, 2, 3. And then we're going to sketch our line through these points. And so that is our first equation. So I have to do the same thing with the negative 3x plus 5y equals 30. So I have negative 3x plus 5y equals 30. First thing I'm going to do is move the negative 3x by adding it to both sides, which now makes it a positive on the right. And then I'm going to divide every term by my coefficient of 5. And that's going to cancel out to give me y. So y equals 3 fifths x plus 30 divided by 5 is 6. It's the same idea. I'm going to go up to 6 on the y-axis. Go up 1, 2, 3 
can go to the right, one, two, three, four, five. I can go down, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five to the left. And then connect with my line. And so if I take a look, we need now to determine the classification. So if I were to see, does my system of equations intersect? And the answer is, yes, they do. They intersect at one point. And that means that if they intersect at one point, that it is going to be a consistent and independent system. And so for this part, we're not trying to identify what that point is. We're just trying to determine the classification of the system. So let's look at example two. Negative 2x plus 5y equals 10, and 4x minus 10y equals negative 20. So first thing we do, again, is we're going to want to graph them. So negative 2x plus 5y equals 10. We are going to add 2x to both sides to get 5y equals 2x plus 10. The negative 2x and 2x cancel. And then we're going to divide every term by 5. And we get y equals 2 fifths x plus 2. So I'm going to go to my y-intercept of 2. I have a slope of 2 fifths, so up 2 to the right 5. And I go down 2 into the left 5. And then I sketch my line. And I do the same thing for the 4x minus 10y equals negative 20. I need to put it in, in order to graph it, put it in slope intercept form. So I would subtract 4x to move it to the other side. And that gives me negative 10y equals negative 4x minus 20. And then divide by negative 10 to all the terms. And you get y equals, no, now we have to simplify. A negative divided by negative is a positive. And 4 tenths simplifies into 2 fifths. So I have 2 fifths x. Negative 20 divided by negative 10 is a positive 2. Well, I have a y-intercept of 2, and I have a slope of 2 fifths. Gives me the same point. Slope of 2 fifths, go down 2 and left 5. And so if I look, I can see here y equals 2 fifths x plus 2. y equals 2 fifths x plus 2. They are the same line, which means they have an infinite amount of solutions. So they do intersect, which means it is consistent, but they intersect an infinite amount of times. They are the same line, and so it is consistent and dependent. And now let's examine the next one. Negative 8x plus 2y equals 20, and negative 4x plus y equals 12. Same idea, let's put it in slope intercept form. So negative 8x plus 2y equals 20. Add 8x to both sides. And that's going to cancel out the negative 8x over here. And so we get 2y equals 8x plus 20. And then divide by your coefficient of 2 to all the terms. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so you have 4x, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So we're going to do the same thing on our graph. We're going to go by 2s. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 12. And again, so I can use my slope based off the intervals. I'm going to go by 2s on the x as well. And here's 12. So I have a y-intercept of 10, so that's right here. 
I have a slope of four. Now I can't go up four, so I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four in the left one. Down one, two, three, four, left one. And then connect with my line. And now let's do the next one. Negative four x plus y equals 12. To get the y by itself, you're going to add the 4x to move it to the other side. It's going to cancel, and you get y equals 4x plus 12. So to graph this, we have a y-intercept of 12, a slope of 4, so down 1, 2, 3, 4, and left 1. Down 1, 2, 3, 4, and left 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and left 1 and then connect with our line. Now these are extremely, extremely close to each other, but if I look, they are parallel, and I can even see they are parallel because this has a slope of four, and this has a slope of four. So that means they are going to be parallel lines. They have the same slope at different y-intercepts, which means there is no intersection. So that tells you right off the bat it is an inconsistent system. And so we actually did an example of every single one, consistent, independent, consistent, dependent, and inconsistent system. Now a skill to develop is to actually be able to grab, put in some of form, but also just look at your equations and see what the property is for each one, consistent, independent, consistent, dependent, and inconsistent. I mean, inconsistent is parallel lines. So what you have to ask yourself is, what is the property of parallel lines? Well, parallel lines are gonna have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. If we go up to consistent and dependent, that means they're the same line. So how do we know based off of our equations if they're the same line? Well, they're going to have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So again, now how do we go through and determine if something's consistent and dependent by looking at the equations? Well, if you look, they're going to have a different slope. The y-intercept doesn't matter as long as they have a different slope. So if they have the same slope, it's either going to be consistent and dependent or inconsistent. And to determine if they have the same slope, which one it is, you look at the y-intercept. If they're a different slope, it's automatically going to be consistent and independent. So analyze how to classify the systems, not just by the graph, but also by the equations themselves. So let's fill in the diagram that I showed on the previous video. So does the system of equations intersect? Yes, no. And then you go through the whole thought, pro thought processes. So Let's work on this. Let's fill in the logic that we can have based off our equations. So our first option is they do intersect consistent. And let's go through the intersect once. So that's consistent and independent. So if they intersect once, that type of system is going to have a different slope. We don't care about the y-intercept. If they have different slopes, they're going to intersect. Does the system of equations intersect? Yes, an infinite amount of times. So that would be consistent, dependent. Well, we said if they intersect the infinite amount of times, then it's the same line. In order for an equation to be the same line, you have to have the same slope and the same y-intercept. And then if it's inconsistent, we said those lines are parallel to each other. And so if they're parallel, that means they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts.
So you can even determine how to classify a system based off of just looking at the equation as well without having a graph. But being able to analyze the graph is another useful skill. So if you don't understand this logic, then go through and examine how to look at it through the graph. But an easy way to kind of make sure you're doing it right is to understand also what it looks like algebraically in the slope-innocent form on how to classify the system of equations.